All right, welcome back, guys. Today we're gonna go over XML and serialization and deserialization. Um, at the end of the video, we're gonna go over a quick explanation of using XML serializer in C Sharp, as well as uh, introduce the topic or the idea of how it's gonna be um, presented on the C Sharp exam for the 7483 exam. So first things first, we'll, we'll dive right into the code. First thing we're gonna need is uh, we're gonna do using systems. Oh, sorry, using system.xml, um, and this is for using XML Reader. And the next thing we're going to have is using system.xml.serialization. You can only imagine what that part is used for, right? Okay, so let's start. So the first thing we do is we're going to make uh, a separate class. Um, Mainly because this is the way, well, yeah, we're going to do a separate class. This is actually going to be very similar to the way it's going to show up on the exam as well. Okay, so the first things first, we'll have our public, and I'll tell you why everything needs to be public when we're using um, XML serializer. Get set, and uh, let's see here. We'll do public string name. And uh, what else is there that we can do for an employee? Uh, we'll go with the date, right? What is that? Date, time. There you go. Date of birth. Get set. Okay. So this is a simple class, right? We have three values that we're going to give. And now, in order to use um, XML serialization, we need the following. Okay, so some key notes that you take care of, uh, take note of, whether you're just doing it for learning how to do XML serialization, deserialization, or prepping for the exam. This code snippet, or not the code snippet, <laughs> this info snippet that will also be inside the GitHub links folder. Um, this is very important. It's long story short, the the main thing to take away from this for exam purposes is it also well, it also does not maintain an object's information. You cannot serialize private fields. Um, as you can see, they say to perform XML serialization, you can mark your type with a serializa uh, serializable attribute, right? Or alternatively, as we did it, you can go straight into the XML root. Here's a further explanation and the things that you can do. Uh, as you can see, use the system.xml.serialization namespace, which is pretty you know, self-explanatory. Uh, XML root, XML attribute, XML element, XML ignore. Uh, what we didn't do is XML array and XML uh, array item, but you guys can figure it out for yourself from here on out. And once again, to reiterate, by default, each public field of your type is serialized as XML element, right? Basically, they're saying if it's private, if there's a private variable, it's not going to do the same thing. So we use something else for that. I think data contract. And lastly, here is a list of things that can be serialized using XML serializer. So now that that's been discussed, let's go over, or actually actually start implementing it. So the first thing we're going to do is we can choose to say serializable, or in this case, uh, so you can do it this way. You could also just outright declare that it's going to be a root, like I'm going to do it right now. And we can give the values right here. Let's call it employees so that we can see a clear indication or a clear difference. And then the namespace, um, obviously you don't need this, but we're going to add this in here because it'll be important for the C sharp exam. So this is really, or alternatively, like I said, you could do serializable. Um, you don't have to. So the next thing, we're going to use this as an attribute. So it could be essentially an extension of the root. The attribute of the root and let's just call this employee ID um, and then the next thing we're gonna make our first element we're gonna keep this very simple so you just have an idea of how it works and okay so we can do it like that so when you do it like this these will all just be XML element let's see here XML element. Mm, 
date of birth. Actually, first I'll show you what it's like without that. Okay, so we have that commented out. I'll uh, show you that in a second. So, that being said, this is all, this chunk right here is very important, especially on the exam. This is all you're going to pretty much you'll get a code snippet like this. Anyways, so now let's give these values, right? So, we'll make a copy of the uh, our instance of employee class and we'll give it some simple values emp dot um, id equals uh, one. Let's keep it simple and let's give this a simple value too code junkie dot Date of birth equals uh, date time dot now. Oh no, I'm sorry. I don't think I need that. Okay. So just to prove that these values are what they are, let's just do this. Employee ID plus. Oof, what's the uh, name? We're gonna console output. <laughs> we're, we're gonna print the output to the console. That's what we're trying to say. Getting tongue tied. Date of birth. All right? So, what would we expect? We'd expect to see one code junkie and the current time right now. Okay. So, we'll comment that out so we know there's values there. So, here's the actual part for serialization. We're going to use text writer. Um, let's see, we need a stream. So we're going to add system dot oh, IO. Okay. Text writer. Writer equal news writer and what we need here is the file path so what we could do is do um, string file path equals we'll fill this in in a second and string file name equals uh, well, this one we could do right now, xml.xml, xml1.xml, XML .xml. XML and in terms of this, we can just go over here, and let's see, we can just copy that. Okay, we'll just change these backslashes. And then we'll add that extra backslash. So all we need to do here is say uh, file path plus file name. All right? Okay. Now we're going to use XML serializer. XML serializer, we'll call it seer, equals new XML serializer, type of. Employee, because that is the class that we're serializing. And the next part is simple. Get the writer stream and the instance of this class that we have and close the stream. Okay. So what should we expect when we run this? We're going to expect an XML file to be made with the data that we have. Um, and sure enough, that's exactly what we have. Employees, as you can see for the XML root, employees, employees. This is the namespace, the namespace. I'm sorry. This is the namespace over here. It's kind of, it's kind of getting cut off right there. That's the namespace. 
And here are our actual values. As you notice, they're public and public. And over here, you'll see this. This is what I wanted to show. So if you don't have, over here we have full name, right? And that's what it comes out as, full name, even though it's just name. And over here we have data DOB, and that's what we have DOB. But if we were to uncomment this, I call it date of birth, the full word. Yes. Look, it changes to date of birth. So that's important because uh, you should just know that you can do that and how to read that and know what expectations are from that. So another thing that you can have here is um, we can have public uh, string um, job role, right? And we'll have get set, set. So then here we can add this additional thing, job role equals, I don't know, uh, developer, right? So now if we were to run this again, take a look at our XML file again, we have job role developer. But say that we want to ignore that. How do you do it? XML ignore. Run it. Yes, change it. And look at that, magic presto. It's been ignored, it doesn't exist anymore. So that's an important thing to know. Okay, so next we're gonna go over how to deserialize this. Okay, so for deserializing, let's just first, I think we can comment all this out. We'll comment this out. And I think we can comment this out because we already have the XML file. So we want to see the this file that we made deserialized and put, in, put back in here, right? So how we can do that? We can do it several ways. We're going to do it right today by using... Uh, Oh, not XML. XML serializer. I don't know why that's not the first thing that comes out. We'll call it DES for deserialize XML serializer. So you get the idea, right? Even if you don't really understand serialization or not familiar with coding, you can at least take note of the pattern that you do it. You take the type of whatever the object is. In this case, it's a class employee. And let's see here, XML reader. Earlier we had a uh, text writer, same thing, really. <laughs> Not really, but you, you get the idea. There's there's streams that have to be opened, and that's how you do it. Um, XML reader dot create. I think we could copy paste this file path file name thing. I don't want to have to rewrite code that I don't have to rewrite. Okay. What's going on here? Whoa, 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 whoa. What is happening here? This is for this. Okay. Let's indent it. <clears throat> Just, uh, if this is your first video that you're watching from my series, don't worry. I'll actually, this will usually be commented out inside the GitHub links and whatnot, so if you're not. So we're going to typecast it to make sure that everything's all gravy. Right? And let's just confirm that we have the values that we have. Okay, let's get rid of that. So at this first, whoops. So what we're expected to see is um, let's see, employee ID one as the attribute for employees root, and then full name code junkie, date of birth, all that jazz, right? So let's go. What happened? Uh, what? Ah, okay. That's what it is. Okay, I had an extra parenthesis there, so now we should be good. And sure enough, we get that. But how do we know that it's not just because it's saved in there? Well, let's change it up. Chunk code, and we'll change this employee to 1000, right? We'll save that, and then we'll run it again. 
1000 junk code. So that's how we know. So yes, it's successfully deserialized. Okay, for the last part of this video, we're going to go over what kind of questions they might ask about XML serialization or deserialization on the C Sharp 7483 exam. So uh, to my recollection, they'll, they'll give you one of, the, one of the question types they'll give you. Or I think the only one that I got at least was um, they'll give you something like this. They'll give you some sample XML, like the one that we've made here, um, with uh, values such as uh, you know the root <clears throat> and attributes such as employee ID and uh, XML elements, right? And then we'll just pretend all of this nonsense doesn't exist, right? All they're going to do is they're going to give you something like this, right? You'll be looking at something that looks like this. Not even that. You won't even have that. Uh, we'll leave that in there just so that we'll, we'll leave this in here. But basically, you'll, all you'll get is something like this chunk. And they'll have these spots will be empty, right? <clears throat> So these, these spots will basically be empty and they're going to ask you, they're going to give you a, 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 a selection to choose from on how to derive what chunks do you put in here to get to an XML that looks like this. So in this case, over here, we can do the XML root thing, you know, with the name that we had. Here's the XML attribute for the ID because, again, this is employee ID. That's what we ended up using it for. You know, <clears throat> this would be XML element, element, and then in this case, we only have date of birth and name, or full name that we made it called in uh, XML. So this would be ignore. So this is basically what you get. All of these XML parts, they're going to be missing, and you have to fill in those blanks. Another question type that I've actually seen on one of the, uh, uh, I think it was measure up. <clears throat> they have a uh, practice test and whatnot. One of the ones that I saw there was something like um, hmm. they'll actually have they won't give you the class, right? They'll they'll show you uh, code snippets of how to make. No, actually, yeah, they do show you the class, right? There's there was no XML ignore one though. There was no case like that. <clears throat> it was all it's just kind of like this. And it's pretty much the same thing. They didn't have attributes for that one, but they might anyways. But the main, the main thing to take away from it is basically understand what goes where to make what kind of XML that you want. You know, how do you derive to this based on these blanks that, that I showed earlier. So that's basically it for C Sharp. Uh, other than that, I hope this video was helpful in learning how to do XML serialization and deserialization as well as prepping for the exam. Um, it should be enough to enough coverage and understanding or at least visually of what to expect on the exam as well so uh, best of luck if you take it if not i just hope you learn something and it helps with whatever project you're working on all right thanks and once again all the project files are going to be linked as the top comment as well as the um, video description and i'll also have links to important snippets such as you know what kind of data you can use and whatnot all right, thanks. Take care.